Greetings from us. We present to you today question number four from chemistry paper two, KCSE 2021. The question tested on salt extraction from the seawater, solubility of ammonia gas in water, and water hardness. Welcome and be with us till the end as we show you how a student would have answered this question correctly to score the full marks. We start with part A. Part A read that seawater contains approximately 3% sodium chloride. Describe how sodium chloride is obtained from the sea. Now, before we answer, this question was open in the sense that we do have two ways of extracting sodium chloride from seawater. One is on large scale and two is on a small scale. So a student had the option of describing how sodium chloride is obtained from seawater either on large scale or on a small scale. So for our discussion, let us give the two expected responses. So we start with the large scale extraction. So seawater, seawater is trapped into a pan or a shallow pond. This is large scale extraction. This gives you the first mark. After the seawater has been trapped into the pan, it is normally allowed to undergo solar evaporation. It's allowed to undergo solar evaporation until solid crystallizes out. So this happens in regions around the coast, especially Malindi. So having scored the first mark here, the word crystallizing out here would give you the next one mark. And finally, we end by saying that the liquor, liquor is actually the liquid part. So liquor or liquid is allowed, is allowed to drain out. Then the solid left is dried. So draining out the liquid or the mother liquor gives the last mark. So this is how sodium chloride is obtained from seawater on a large scale. Now suppose a student thought of the small scale extraction. This could be in a lab or somewhere where the amount of water now is not very much. So for such students, you talk about put seawater in a beaker. Okay? What do you do next? You heat, we would allow boil, or we would allow evaporate. Okay? The solution to saturation. So, heating or boiling or evaporate would give you one whole mark. Then saturation would give you a half a mark. Then what do you do next? We allow the solution. Of course, at this point it is saturated. So we allow the saturated solution to cool for crystals to be formed. For crystals to be formed. So cooling here, a half a mark, and crystals to be formed, one whole mark. 
that student who thought in terms of small scale extraction of sodium chloride from seawater also got his or her three marks in full. Those who also thought of the large scale extraction also had their fair share. Let us continue with the rest of the questions. This one is talking about solubility. So the question read, solubility of sodium chloride is 36.2 grams in 100 grams of water at room temperature. Determine the concentration in moles per liter over saturated aqueous sodium chloride at room temperature. We go ahead to give you the molar masses or the relative atomic masses and the density of water. Now, to answer this question, we need to get the concentration of sodium chloride in grams per liter. So our first argument from the first principle approach is that if 100 grams, which is equivalent to 100 cubic centimeter, remember density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. So the mass here, grams, is also the same as the volume. So here we were able to dissolve 36.2 grams. What about one liter? One liter would have how many grams? So doing cross multiplication, we have 1036.2 divided by 100. And that gives me, this gives me 362 grams per liter of sodium chloride. The next step is now to calculate the relative formula mass for my sodium chloride. And this is 23 plus 35.5 and I get 58.5. Now, from the understanding of relative formula mass, if we took 58.5 grams and we dissolved it in a liter of solution, I get one molar solution of sodium chloride. For our situation, we had 362 grams in one liter of solution. How many moles would that have? So this is 362 multiplied by 1, divided by 58.5. And I get an answer if my calculator serves me right. I get 6.188 molar solution. So that is how we were to answer that question. On the marking, getting the mass or the concentration in grams per liter, half a mark. Calculating the RFM, a half a mark. Doing the division here, a half a mark. And getting the final uh, concentration in moles per liter, a half a mark. Total two. Part C. Ammonia is highly soluble in water. Explain how aqueous ammonia is prepared starting with ammonia gas. Now, if you remember your theory very well, this is where we use an inverted funnel. And please, without the word inverted, no marks for you. We were looking for the word inverted funnel. So, a student was supposed to answer this this way. Ammonia is bubbled or passed through an inverted funnel. Just mentioning the inverted funnel, you get your full marks. So this one is dipped in water in a beaker. So that's what we do. So why are we using an inverted funnel? This is to prevent this is to prevent suck back for the next mark, or there is an option of this is to increase surface area. That was how the question was supposed to have been answered. 
Many students just write funnel without the word inverted and you end up losing everything. You get a zero without the word inverted. Even if you wrote that it would prevent suckback, just a mere funnel will not do that. So without inverted, no mark at all. We would also accept a diagram. We would accept a diagram. I believe you know how the diagram is drawn. Uh, a delivery tube that has an inverted funnel at this end and then dipped into, slightly dipped into water in a beaker. Mm, this one would do, but you don't end here. Somewhere near the diagram, you write that the inverted funnel is supposed to do what? To prevent suckback. Full marks would also be yours at that point. So, to some graph here, solubility against temperature. Remember, we are dissolving a gas. So how would the shape look like? This is very, very, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a very, it's a very wisely set question. So we know that if you boil water, gases that are dissolved in water escape. This we did very well in Form 1 when we discussed how rusting can be prevented. You remember when we put in iron nails into water that had been boiled and then we put in some oil layer to prevent re-entry of air. So that means we were boiling the water to expel dissolved gases, oxygen included, so that when you put in now your iron nails, they will not rust because of absence of oxygen. So this happens to every other gas. When temperature increases, the gaseous particles actually gain kinetic energy and escape from the solution. So that means at lower temperature, solubility is high, and then at high temperature, solubility is low. So how then does the curve look like? That would be the shape or anything similar to that. This gives you one whole mark. So in the next question, we were asked to give a reason for the shape of the curve. So here, a student was supposed to simply write that solubility, solubility decreases with an increase uh, with an increase in temperature just as we have explained uh, when we were drawing uh, the sketch so this would give you half a mark you continue to explain why this is so so you continue that gaseous particles gaseous particles gain energy they gain energy from the increase in temperature and escape and escape from the solution so the higher the temperature the lower the solubility simply because of that reason finally the last question part d was asking about water hardness and it read Water hardness is due to the presence of magnesium and calcium ions. Explain how these ions get into the water sources for two marks. This was rather a long answer. So a student was supposed to start with carbon-4 oxide. And uh, as we have explained earlier, it is safer to write this in uh, words, but uh, I'm saving on space. So allow me to put it in symbols. So carbon-4 oxide dissolves in rainwater. Carbon-4 oxide dissolves in rainwater, forming, forming carbonic acid. Now, up to there, one whole mark, 
We then continue that uh, the carbonic acid, the carbonic acid reacts with the rocks. The carbonic acid reacts with rocks that contain uh, calcium and magnesium salts and magnesium salts this for a half a mark and then you continue that uh, that hence leaving leaving uh, calcium ions and magnesium ions this one you could as well write in words no big deal uh, in the water for the last a half a mark totaling to two marks so candidates this is the end of our video and i hope you have learned something continue to be with our channel as you revise and as usual we continue to wish you the best